Have you ever wondered about the physics of the modern forehand, the science behind power generation? I have, and it's been a little confusing. So if you've been, ever, been confused about the physics, the biomechanics of the modern forehand, stay tuned, listen in for a short podcast, and we'll talk about some of the science behind the modern forehand, the ATP forehand, and how to get lag and why lag is so important on the forehand. So basically you have the concept of uh, angular velocity. So angular velocity is how fast an object is rotating. So angular, think going around the body, like so you have the center of the body or you have the shoulder as a fixed joint and the racket is going around the body and this is uh, the angular velocity, how, how fast it's moving is, is the angular velocity and it's measured in radians, this term radians. You don't have to worry about that radians per second. You don't have to worry about that. So then you have, you have this term linear velocity at the tip of the racket. So at the tip of the object, whether it's a sword or a knife, you have the linear tip velocity. So that is how fast the actual uh, part of the racket is moving, in this case, the tip. So the tip is moving faster than, for example, the handle of the racket. So that's important to understand. You have the lever, the racket, and the handle is moving slower than the actual tip. Uh, so if you can wrap your minds around that. Uh, so you have the linear velocity of the tip, and don't confuse it with the angular velocity, which is how fast the racket is rotating. And angular velocity is the entire racket, the rotation of the entire racket. And tip velocity uh, is different on, on, on where you are on the lever. All right, so you guys with me so far or did you already swipe? Hopefully you didn't swipe. Remember, you have angular velocity, that's the rotational speed, and you have linear tip velocity, which is, or, or linear velocity, which is uh, which part, how fast uh, an individual part of the racket is moving. In this case, we're focusing on the tip in general because we want to get more tip speed, right? Okay, so the linear tip speed equals angular velocity times the radius. And the radius is just how long the arm and the racket are combined. So uh, that's how you can uh, measure linear velocity of the tip. That's why... Um, if you have a straighter arm, you can have you can generate more linear tip speed as long as you can swing it fast. Okay, hopefully you're not confused and you're with me because even for me, uh, and I'm a student of this, sometimes the terminology can be off-putting, uh, it can be kind of abstract, and some of the mathematical terms or the physics terms can get uh, a little uh, confusing and there's different equations. So, you know, if you just want to understand some of the basic science, hang in there and stay with me. So then you have momentum, mass, and force. So in general, in physics, momentum equals the mass of the object times the velocity. So momentum is mass times velocity. A knife or a short racket is easier to swing quickly but it doesn't have much mass. And the shorter the length, that limits the tip velocity that we talked about. Let's say, for example, you swing a long racket and you get a straighter arm, uh, you'll be able to generate more momentum because the, the radius is uh, longer and it's, it's uh, you know, a, a heavier, it's gonna be a heavier racket, more mass. And it, it, if you can accelerate it, if you can accelerate a heavier, longer racket, you can uh, accelerate it the same way or at a similar speed to the short one, uh, the short lighter racket, uh, you'll be able to hit the ball harder. So that's important to understand. We're trying to generate the maximum angular momentum. This is where the moment of inertia, which is just try to think of that as how hard it is to swing the object. Like how hard is it to swing the object? That's called the inertia, the moment. They, in physics, it's called, it's called the moment of inertia. And you multiply the moment of inertia, which is related to the mass. Just think like you have a big, uh, heavy sword and it's, it's like hard to swing uh, that sword because it's long and heavy. That's gonna increase the moment of inertia. And you, you multiply that 
by the angular velocity. The angular velocity, uh, which remember the angular velocity is the, the, the speed of the rotation. And that's, in, that's the radians per second. And the, the linear tip velocity, I believe is measured in meters per second, but we can check that. But so they're, they're, they're like different measurements of speed. The, you have the angular velocity, which is the, which is, they should come up with a different name for it. It really should be called like, rota you could call it rotational velocity. That would be easier to, to understand, rotational velocity. The angular velocity, um, uh, if you want to try to figure out how much momentum, so momentum is going to give you the, the maximum force into the ball and send the ball uh, with more power. And so we all want to try to get the angular momentum. Don't confuse angular momentum with angular velocity. They're, they're different. Angular velocity is just how fast the racket, the object is moving rotationally. Okay. Uh, so just to recap, since, since longer and heavier objects have higher moments of inertia, they store more angular momentum and deliver more power to the shots, but they can be harder to swing. So the trade-off as a, as a tennis athlete is you're trying to find the heaviest, longest racket you can swing fast, basically. And the heavier you go, and the, um, the longer the racket, and in this case, also the extension of the racket, your arm, that will contribute to angular momentum, and that will equal you know, more power into the shot if you can swing it uh, fast with the fast angular velocity. I appreciate you. I hope you enjoyed this simple review of the physics of the modern forehand swing. I'll see you guys on the next program. God bless.